Here, Kevin Costner scoring a legal win over his estranged wife in their child support battle. A California judge reducing the Yellowstone actor's monthly payments to $63,000. By the way, that's less than half the $129,000 that Christine Baumgartner was getting and way less than the $161,000 that she was demanding in court. Let's bring in News Nation legal contributor and Law and Crime Network reporter and anchor Jesse Weber. Um, Jesse, good to have you on Labor Day. Uh, Christine Baumgartner has a accused Costner of being able to afford way more in child support than he claims. But let's remember Yellowstone is now over. I also know Costner claimed in court last week it wasn't even his choice to leave the show. Uh, so what all factored into that judge deciding to lower his payments to 63000 a month? Good morning. Good to see you on this Labor Day. Um, what complicates this when we talk about child support, and child support is not something you can contract out of in a prenuptial agreement. So it's really what the court decides. We are talking about what are the reasonable needs of the children. Now, when we talk about celebrities, it gets a bit complicated, right? They don't have, the, their children don't have the lives of everybody else. Yep. There are houses, there's education, there are horses. They have a life that they're accustomed to. Having said that, the court also takes into consideration well, how much can Kevin Costner pay? And I think when he took the stand and said his life is radically different than it was uh, now than it was you know, two years ago, he was making over a million dollars, I believe a month for the Yellowstone contract. That was, he said, a once in a lifetime deal. He's not gonna get that anymore. He's not making the money that he was. So to his uh, interpretation was not only can he not afford it, but Christine Bumgarner's expenses, he said, were overinflated. She would attri attribute or allocate plastic surgery yep. and, these and these shopping expenses to the children's expenses, and it didn't make sense. And in the end of the day, the court looked at this and said, this is what the children really need. And, he kind of peer and the judge kind of pierced away through what both sides were saying. And speaking of what the children need, I also wanted to ask you about that. I know her attorneys at one point telling the court that uh, luxury was practically in the kids' DNA at this point. How legally vital is it that children's quality of life, and in this case, luxury, is equal? I mean, 50-50 at both yep. parents' homes. And in this case, is that the best interest for the kids? Well, look, in a way, yes, right? You don't want to completely alter the children's lives because I think the court realizes that if there are victims in a divorce, it is the children, right? And so at the same token, do they really need, I'm just going to throw something out there, a giant horse farm or something like that? Maybe not in every circumstance. And so I think there's a, it's an interesting balance test, right? There's no concrete answer to that. It's what is the, you don't want to completely alter the children's lives but you also have to recognize that a divorce changes everything and whether or not the uh, one parent can actually support the needs of the children that changes. Yeah. And no matter what people think <clears throat> about, uh, you know, the details of the case, the money, it's terribly sad to watch this play out in public um, yeah. for for a married couple. When you are awarded a certain amount of child support, is that yours to spend how you see fit? Or do you have to prove it's truly going to home and child needs? Because to your point, part of this legal battle was Costner criticizing her for extravagant spending. Um, no. So do you have to prove anything or no? Well, that was part of the court. That was part of her argument about what, where the expenses are actually going. And uh, Kevin Costner was of the opinion she's using it for personal expense and saying it's for child support. Look, when she starts receiving this money, it has to go to the kids. And if there go becomes a situation where you know she's pocketing it or using it for something, like I said, like plastic surgery, his attorneys are going to jump on it and there's going to be a further court hearing. So this money has to be allocated to the children for what they need. Now, in terms of what her expenses are, they're, ba they're battling that out, right? So she signed a prenuptial agreement with him. She's challenging that. There's going to be a trial in November. My guess is she's going to try to invalidate it, maybe say that Kevin Costner didn't disclose all of his financial assets before they entered into the agreement, and maybe she's entitled to more. I don't know. Those are pretty ironclad. And right now it's working in his favor because I think it was like a month ago or two months ago, the court held that she had to leave the home based on the prenuptial agreement. So right now that seems pretty strong, but she'll have an opportunity to challenge it in court for additional spousal support. Yeah, and we'll see if that opens him up to, to more financial vulnerability. Um, terribly sad to watch play out. Jesse Weber, thanks so much for breaking that down for us though.
You got it. Have a good Labor Day. Thanks you so much. Too. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.